Grand Rising, everyone. Grand Rising. I'm so happy to be here with you today. My name is Dr. Alice Reed, and I am the spiritual leader here at Center for Spiritual Living Capistrano Valley. And it is indeed October. And in October is every is the beginning of the month, and in the beginning of the month we have a new theme. And the theme this month is indeed um, power to the people. Power to the people. We have this um, little altar here that probably can't see on camera of people just raising their arms and recognizing their um, power with each other. Um, it's a beautiful opportunity for us to really do a deep dive with this thing called power. The other thing that's happening this month is that we are doing our annual committed giving program. And what that means is that we talk a little bit more about this community and the givingness of spirit and the givingness that comes through you to support our community. We, um, we have a really unique opportunity this year, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But for now, what I want you to know is as we talk about power and we talk about committed giving, I kind of saw that as a little bit related. And I was thinking to myself when I was um, puzzling about what we, I would say about power and then what I would say about money is that contrary to popular belief, money is not power. Your relationship with power equals your money. Your relationship with power equals your money. And what I mean by that is that we are a philosophy that absolutely recognizes the power of the one mind, that divine intelligence that's moving through us, and that we are reflecting that power in our lives. And so if we give our power away, that gets reflected in our experiences. Are you tracking with me? Get what I'm saying here? And today, um, we're talking about the power begins within. And I love, as Rick was doing his, the invocation where he said the power is, the, it doesn't, it comes from the people, not to the people. It, it does come to the people, but from within first. From within first. And so what I want us to do is to look at our relationship with power because that's where we're going to be able to tease out the places, the obstacles, the challenges that we find ourselves facing on a day-to-day -day basis when we begin to understand our relationship with power. And so I want to start with a little reflection practice. And so I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and take a deep breath with me. And let's do that again. And one more time, just allowing that breath to carry away any concerns or thoughts or ideas that you might have carrying around in your mind right now. Taking an inhalation and releasing. And as you focus on your breath and your body temple and your place where you are right now in this moment, Allow yourself to simply be still. And in the stillness, I want to ask you a question. And I want you to pay attention to what comes on up in your mind first, because this is your, your subconscious speaking to you. This is your, the thoughts and the consciousness you're carrying. <clears throat> What is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the word power? Let it come up. Recognize it. Don't, don't go to what you think you should think. Yeah. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the word power? And taking a deep breath. And presencing yourself back in the room, um, camera people, I'm going to do something a little 
off script, I'd love to hear from a couple of you. Come forward, please. Okay. So um, what came to me when she said the word power is electricity and the energy of spirit that runs through us as us going out into the universe. You're so evolved. That's not what comes up for me. <laughs> <laughs> Come forward, please. What came up for me is spiritual strength. When you say power, I think of spiritual strength. Wow. Yeah. You guys should do my talk. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. Anybody come up with anything different? You, okay, we have money. Can you? Decision making. Decision -making. Yes. Dominance. Dominance. Now, now we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> Dominance, right. Um, all right, great. Thank you. I wanted to capture a couple of ideas from, uh, from you as we looked at this idea of power, because what I want to tell you about power is that I have not always had a healthy relationship with it. The, the relationship that I've had with power that I have to continually remind myself that it's not true. And that relationship of power is a relationship where I feel like people, places, things have power over me. That I have to fight to get my power. That I have to stand up for my power. There's there seems to be, and, and, and if, you were, if I was to do this on the streets of San Clemente, I think some of the answers would be very different. Um, because they aren't prayer practitioners like a couple of us who <laughs> answered so beautifully, and I'm so grateful. You can see what happens when you are in this teaching for a long time. You do begin to change your definitions around some of the limiting ideas that we carry into when we first come to this to this um, teaching. Oftentimes we see power as outside of us. We ex and when we externalize our relationship with power, when we, when we externalize it, when I begin to think that the power that I'm seeking is in the government or in my spouse or in my wallet <laughs> or in my job, when I have that externalized relationship with power, I'm giving my power away. I'm simply giving it away whenever I externalize that. Now, Ernest Holmes in the Declaration of Principles, Ernest Holmes was the founder of this philosophy, which is a synthesizer, and in the Declaration of Principles, he writes, we believe in the healing of the sick and the control of conditions through the power of this mind. And I want you to know, mind is capitalized. So he's not talking about Lisa's mind. He's not talking about Grant's mind. He's not talking about Jamie's mind. He's talking about the one mind. He's talking about presence, the thing that makes the grass grow. That we have the power to control conditions through the power of the one mind. He goes on to write, wherever the image, wherever the image of thought is set, there the power to create resides. God, if thou seest God, dust if thou seest dust. When we bring a lamp into a darkened room, where the, does the darkness go? The darkness neither came nor did it go away. It never was a thing of itself, merely a condition. And we have power over conditions. And so he's using that lovely little metaphor about light and darkness and that there is no such thing as darkness. There's only the absence of light. And so when we begin to forget about where our power resides, and that is in the relationship with the divine that lives within each one of us, when we forget that, we forget that we have this light that we are carrying. It is this light of God, it's spirit that moves through us, and that when we remember that, anything unlike it is dispelled. It dissolves. And that's where our power lies. Our power lies in our relationship with consciousness and with the one divine intelligence and how we draw from that as opposed to drawing from what we see out in the world. Holmes goes on to say, the relationship between the individual and 
the universal mind is one of reflection. That is, what we image for ourselves, it meaning one universal mind, images for us. We have a relationship of reflection that everything we experience is a reflection of our consciousness and that we have this, this ability to use this power because this power is neutral, like the electricity that Faith talked about. It is a neutral power. Now, if, if you're like me and you grew up in some kind of judo-Christian type of faith, well, you, you weren't taught that power was neutral. You were taught that power was anywhere but here, right? That was the experience I had. And, and if even in the, some of the Eastern religions, there's a sense of not, you know, not being... Well, actually, in the Eastern, in Eastern traditions, I think there's much more of a neutral relationship with power when I think about it. And that is really what Holmes is going for. He's going for this... Uh, Understanding that power, power is something that we already have, something we have access to that is never denied us. But that we have to, we have to reveal it. I was going to say reach. See, you know, there's that westernized mind, right? It's always dogging me back here. <laughs> it is something we have to reveal. It's something that we have to remember. I have a huge forgetter. And that forgetter, it's like, it's, it's like there's a button, right? And, and, I, and I begin reading the news, the forgetter goes on. <laughs> I have an argument with a loved one, my forgetter goes on. And, and so I'm so grateful for philosophies like this, rooms like this, um, people like this that, that I'm in community with that were always reminding me of where my power really lies. And, I, and I, so I was going to, I thought I would tell you two stories briefly about my relationship with power. Um, one is what not to do. <laughs> one is what to do. And the first one is, many of you heard my saga about buying a car last year. <laughs> I gave my power away from the minute I decided I wanted to buy a car. I was just immediately in this place of I was going to be taken advantage of. And, and I, you know, I would sit down and I would have my friendly face on and my, I would just be so kind. And then they would start talking and then they would talk about how much a car is. You've seen how much a car is today, a new car. And something in me would get triggered. Now, Don Beatty, who wrote the themes for this month, gives us two tools that we can use to combat or to remember or to come back to that place of knowing where our power really resides. And one is to know the truth. The truth of the situation of buying a car for me was I had the money. I, I had a car that was running. <laughs> I was really okay. The truth of the matter is I didn't want to part with the money. And the truth underneath that, and this is often I talk to you about peeling away the layers, the truth underneath that was, at some level, I, didn't, I was afraid I wouldn't have enough in, the, in a larger scheme of things. And the truth underneath that was that in some place in my subconscious still lied a little remnants of not believing I was enough. And so my relationship with power was was off-center because I was still operating from some lie in my subconscious, not from the truth. And if I could have accessed the truth, which I did from time to time, it wasn't like that constantly, uh, but it did take me a while to get a car. <laughs> um, but when I could access the truth, I was completely at peace with the process. And I can tell you now that while there was a large withdrawal from my savings account, <laughs> <laughs> to buy that car, um, I'm really at peace with it. You know, I have come to terms with it because I, I have let it go. So, so this, I, you know, this, this experience of buying a car is an, ex is an example of how we give our power away because of fear. Because at some level, we have a fear of some sort and we're afraid of something that is going to happen that we don't want to happen that we don't want to happen. The, um, the other 
experience. Well, I want to say one more thing about how I got to being at peace with it. This is a really important piece. I'm really surprised they almost passed it by. Don talks about uh, knowing the truth, and he talks about forgiveness. That's that F word. It's always coming up, isn't it? (laughs) Forgiveness. He writes, forgiveness is a potent catalyst for healing and plays an an indispensable role in our journey of transforming our relationship with power. As we delve into our inner work, we inevitably, inevitably encounter past experience that have left imprints on our psyche. Through forgiveness, we release the grip of these painful memories and liberate ourselves from the chains of resentment and anger, and I would add, old ideas about our worthiness. By forgiving ourselves, we acknowledge that we are human and have likely made mistakes in how we handled power. We extend compassion to ourselves, allowing room for growth and self-evolution. So... When you, and most of us, it'll happen. Please see me if this has never happened to you. If you've never gotten gripped by fear, if you've never gotten gripped by an old idea, if you've never had a relationship with power that wasn't healthy, I want to meet you. (laughs) Because, (laughs) Because it happens to all of us. But... We have tools in our spiritual toolbox to draw from where we can know the greater truth. And sometimes we need people, friends along the way, companions, to reflect that back to us so we can remember it and to practice some level of forgiveness, whether it is forgiveness of others or forgiveness of ourselves. The other experience that I had with my relationship with power was when I became ill uh, two years ago and I, um, it turned out that I had an aneurysm in my brain. And in that experience, I didn't walk into the doctor's office thinking they were going to try to get over on me. No, I completely surrendered myself to the process. I had, I had a level of trust right away. And I knew the truth about my body temple, that anything that it created, it could dissolve. And the experience I had with the aneurysm was that it was healed and completely dissolved. And I was led to the perfect doctor who led me to the perfect brain surgeon who, who loved what he did so much, was so enthusiastic about his work that he got me into the operating room quickly and, and helped me through that process. And I, I healed. And I and never once... I'm not lying. Not once did I resist the process. Now, when you're, when you're in great peril, sometimes it's easier to, to, to surrender and let go because I couldn't handle that. It was in my brain. But the point that I'm trying to make is the real difference between the car buying and the health event was my ability to surrender and let go my ability to surrender and let go and trust, and trust. Now there's an amazing author, David Hawkins. Who's familiar with David Hawkins? Yeah. He wrote two books that I want to highlight this month. One is Power Versus Force. Just the title alone should tell you something about what he's talking about. And the other is Letting Go, the path to surrender, the... the, I want to say the sacred path to surrender, but I think it's just the path to surrender. Um, And in those books, he talks about our relationship with power. And he talks about the different levels and vibrations that we're working with in power. And so we're going to talk about that over the next couple weeks. But the only thing I want to talk about today, because they only give me about 20 minutes up here, um, is that our relationship and even our definitions of power are not accurate out in the, in the thoughtosphere. <laughs> when I asked chat GBT, which is that uh, artificial intelligence uh, qu- query system that it seems to be everywhere, when I asked it what was the difference between power and force, 
honestly, I think it was confused. But remember, artificial intelligence just gleans what's in the group think and bubbles it up for you. So it talked about power being influence and force being a direct application of action or physical pressure. But honestly, if I see power as influence, I'm still othering it. It's still outside of me. It's not the power that we're talking about this month. We're talking about the power of the thing that makes the grass grow, makes your heart beat, makes your lungs extract every nutrient your body needs and moves it through your bloodstream to nourish your body temple. That is the power that we're talking about, and we have power with that. Gosh, I still pull these, I was going to say entity. Again, it's a, an old westernized idea. We have power with that existence. Science of Mind refers to God's spirit as the one infinite reality. And I love that term because, and, and capital O, one, capital I, infinite, capital R, reality. And I love that because that is what we're talking about working with. We're not talking about working with something outside ourselves that I got to get through a class or a book. Every class you take at this center is there to remind you of the power that lives within you. We are not going to make you different. We are only going to help you be more authentic and remember that power that lives in you. I'm going to leave you with this quote from Power Versus Force. David Hawkins writes, there are no causes, and by that he means answers to our problems and dilemmas, there are no causes in the observable world. The observable world is the world of effects. In other words, the world around us that we see, this observable world, is not where your power lies. Your power lies within. Thank you very much. So let's bring ourselves together as I do this affirmative prayer. Or you might want to think of it as just a reminder of the power within you. As you close your eyes, and just again tapping into your breath, remembering those lovely definitions of power that our practitioners gave us. For there is a power and a presence that is everywhere present. It is the circumference, it is the center, it is everywhere. And so as we allow our minds to let go of the walls that we have put around reality and step into the infinite, what I know is that that infinite power knows no limits, no limitations, no lack, no not enoughness. It only knows perfection and creates out of itself over and over and over again. And so I know that for each one of us, like the wave is related to the ocean, like the sunbeam is related to the sun, we are one with it. And so I know as we move through this day, this week, this month, we continually capture those places where our mind wanders to a different idea and brings our mind back to our heart and our soul and that intrinsic knowing of the power and the presence that is moving in as and through each one. And I trust that as we tease out our relationship to power this month, that each one is brought to a fuller, more complete, and more blessed experience of all that falls before them. And so it is with pleasure and joy that I simply anchor this 
spiritual mind treatment, this affirmative prayer, knowing the power and the presence of the one has imbued me with the wisdom and the understanding that has resonated with the wisdom and the understanding of each one, that together we know our oneness. We know our power. And so we surrender this word. We are glad for it. We let it go. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you very much.